I'm John Joe McFadden from the University of Surrey. I'm a firm believer that we should embrace genetically modified crops and food. And the reason I believe that is I think they have the potential to provide enormous benefit to mankind. They have more resistance to disease, uh, the crops, and they can produce higher yields. And there's the potential now of generating fortified uh, uh, foods and fortified crops that can really tackle some important diseases in the world. The most famous of these, of course, is, uh, uh, is the golden rice, which um, uh, can, has been shown to be able to, to provide the uh, daily requirement for uh, vitamin A. Vitamin A deficiency is responsible for uh, making half a million children each year go blind and within a year, a thir two thirds of them are dead. But I, I mean, I'd like to, like to go back a little and you know, vitamin A deficiency around the world is an enormous problem, but we need to go back and ask questions about what kind of agricultural systems we want and how we want them to operate. These are economic and political questions, they're not scientific questions. And at the moment we have a system of giant industrial agriculture, of monocultures, of huge quantities of basically a very small number of crops that are coming from a very small number of sources. At the moment, 53% of the world's seeds come from three companies. What we need is diverse um, multicultural type crops, all sorts of different crops happening together, not the big monocultures, and not the situation where it's controlled by big companies that farmers have to buy their seed every year fresh you know, at considerable cost, and also crops that are engineered in a way that relies on those companies selling agricultural chemicals to them. So you're looking at a high cost, high input system that's controlled by, you know, three companies. But this is not specific to GM crops. This is the situation in agriculture around the world today. And it's a situation in lots of other industries. Most of our pharmaceuticals are produced by two or three or four or five different companies. Be because but we're talking everything we, our clothes we're, are made by multinational, our, our computers are made we're, by we're, multinational we're companies. We're talking about our food supply. This is the most <coughs> absolute, absolute essential thing. Now, in, in the Green Party, we're not opposed to GM research, very much so. But the fact is, we've had three decades, as, as John Vidal of The Guardian said, we've had three decades, and we've only got a handful full of crops from GM. And, you know, the evidence is that, the, in terms of yields, that GM crops aren't keeping up with conventionally bred crops, that's the evidence. So we have a situation where this is a technology that really hasn't worked after three decades. Well, there are 14 million farmers in the world today who are using GM crops. 90% of them are in the developing world. Most of them are small farmers. Now you either have to believe that they're all stupid or that they are getting some benefit from them. And all the studies that have been done, and really a lot of studies have been done, show that farmers make rational decisions. Nobody forced them to choose GM crops, they do. But as well as that, there In are the potential benefits. Very large health advertising benefits. campaigns. There are the potential health benefits of uh, crops such as uh, golden rice, which are unarguable. They are potentially huge, and it's a it's a catastrophe. Every year, the half a million children are dying of vitamin A de deficiency every year, when for at least a decade, this solution has been available, but has never been allowed to be tried out in field trials, proper field trials, because of the opposition of ecological right, so, groups. So actually, as you say, there would need to be proper field trials, so therefore we haven't, we're not going to do this next year, so that's a very simplistic explanation. The field trials are being going on at the moment in the Philippines mm -hmm. and in other countries, field so trials we, are going We're not talking on. about a magic solution next but year. But the field trials should have been a decade ago and they haven't weren't a decade ago because people like the Green Party and everyone else opposed because opposed the general them. public you know the general public is concerned because if people are jumping up and down and saying this is going to kill you people will get concerned well no but that's, we that's have absolutely to work not what with, I'm saying there, we there have to work concerns. with reason and logic I think in this world mm -hmm. and if you want to stop people from doing something there should be good reasons and yours seem to be ideological on the basis of you're against capitalism and well, against uh, I, Monsanto I, 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 well, I, I think lots of people are against Monsanto. In most parts of Africa, for instance, people use organic farming because it's all there is, and 30% of their crops get eaten by insect. When they switch to GM crops, that goes down to a much smaller fraction. That's why farmers in India, Africa and places are now taking up GM crops. What you want to say is they are stupid, and for no, ideological reasons, we're, we're I saying, want to we're, stop we're, you we're, from we're, we're, doing we're, this. We're saying is we want to provide them with a wide range of alternatives. You, no, you and want to ban it. Well, you want to ban it. That's we, we different. Want, we, we, we want to stop. You don't want it, to. It, you don't want to give them the choice. Isn't that correct? Um, we, what we want to do is see is see that there's no release of you these without the proper developing. controls. You don't want to give developing which there isn't at the moment. And yeah. what we want to do also is see that everything, if there is GM crops out there, that it's labelled so that consumers have the choice of knowing what they can choose. Okay.